Hello and welcome to Lydia Hawk Designs. Today we're going to make a very handsome plaid flannel shoe bag. You can buy these off my website. They come in medium and large. Just go to LydiaHawk.com. I had to use a free pattern that I found online and then I modified it to make it super elegant. My husband loves his shoe bags. We're going to cut our main fabric 14 by 28 inches. We're going to cut two top pieces that our parachute cord is going to go through and those are 13.5 by 3 inches. The parachute cord I'm using is 550 because it matches the dual cord lock I found. We're cutting 32 inches of the parachute cord and the dual cord lock closure is 16 by 20 millimeters. I'm using cotton flannel because it's very soft and an ideal material for lying against a shoe surface. You can use different sizes of parachute cord and dual cord lock. Just make sure that they match. The cord has to fit inside the lock, so compatible sizing is very important. What's really fun about this bag is that you can make it with a full opening or you can add a center divider. So a full opening, your average shoe bag, really. Center divide means that each shoe goes in its own side. They don't rub up against each other. They're fully enclosed in soft cotton flannel. It's just a really elegant feature to add to any shoe bag. And of course, I add my very own Degalodi label. We're gonna start by taking one of our top pieces and cutting it in half. That's what creates this elegant opening right in front. Something I love about plaid, there are lines already featured in the pattern and half of 13 and a half is 6.75. So right here, we don't have a natural line for that. Let's see if the other one does. 16.75, there is a natural line right here, right along that edge. So that's what I'm cutting. And now we are going to iron and sew a half inch seam on either side of all three pieces. Now we're going to take the top, we're going to fold it with the edges facing the top. Pin it in the center of the top of either side, making sure we have the same amount of space on either end. I don't sew the edge of the material, just within the top piece. I start with the back stitch and then go all the way to the end and back stitch again. And on this side, as you can see, same thing on either side. And we're going to sew a half inch seam along each edge. Now we're going to sew a quarter inch seam on either side of our bag. I forgot to film sewing the edges here, but as a side note, I like to back stitch at the beginning and end and also add my label to my bag. Afterwards, we're going to turn it inside out and then you'll want to make sure the inside seam is flat and sew a quarter inch top seam all around the top, starting at the edge so that 
it's harder to see any overlap. Now that the bag is done, I'm going to take a knitting needle. You can use anything with a point. This one's dull, that's why I like to use it. And push the corners out. And now we are ready to add the cord. So, just so you can see, there's a wrong side and a right side to the cord. So I'm going to from the right side, I don't want to feed that through. Like that. So feed each end through the hole. I want to make sure that they're even and then just pull it all the way to the end. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take either side and we're going to feed it through first the front. And this cord is thick so it's pretty easy to just feed it through. I know with smaller bags you can usually attach a safety pin and use that, but I find that these holes are so big and the paracord is so thick that it's easy, fairly easy to just feed it through and then straighten it up once it gets inside. Now our halfway point is right here. And what I do is use a clip to hold this side in place while I go ahead and feed the other side through. So now, so that we've just got this one area to pull, I am going to line up my stitches with these two top pieces and I'm going to stitch a line back and forth over these two pieces of cord end to secure them so that they don't go anywhere. So now we can either leave as is, or we don't want our shoes rubbing up against each other, we can add a center divider. You can use a fabric marker, something that'll wash out. I find that as long as the lines are straight, you can find the center with a ruler and you can just eyeball it with plaid. I'm gonna use pins because I don't really have a good fabric marker that I can see in this material. And I'm gonna start two and a half inches from the inside top of my bag, not here, but here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark there as well.
And there you have it, a gorgeous shoe bag that looks designer, that looks like you spent a pretty penny on it and your loved one is going to love it because it's so elegant, so easy to open and close. Again, not a lot of loose ends. If you want to purchase these bags, just go to LydiaHawk.com. I'm adding a link in this video to download the PDF with the written instructions. Also adding a link. Thank you so much for dropping in and following this tutorial with me. Until next time.